Okay, let's see how long this actually takes to, to boot up. Twenty seconds. Yeah, 20 seconds, wow. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to another Mr. Beta Byte video. <laughs> video and this one's a little bit different insofar as we're looking at something really very modern. Uh, this is a Panasonic DMR EZ48B. Um, probably better said as the DMR EZ48B um, because it's supposed to be an easy um, sort of culmination of um, VHS and DVD and DVD RAM and also it's got a Freeview um, tuner in it as well and it also has HDMI on the back so it's really a very flexible machine and uh, also have the remote for this which is absolutely absolutely gold to have that <laughs> to be honest um, but uh, it does have its issues and uh, if I turn it on uh, hello and let's see what it does and it's quite slow and booting um, yeah, very slow So yeah, it's really struggling with the, um, the DVD RAM side of it and uh, getting error codes and uh, whatever. So this deck is obviously not happy. Um, and it here is driving. Oh, I can close it now. I've been playing with this. Yeah, and it sort of drives on. So it, it strikes me as probably something wrong with the, an end sensor there for the, the tray. Oh, I see that's fine now. But it's... Obviously not good. Yeah, so um, we're going to look at that. Also, going to go through quite a few issues with this deck. Um, there are firmware issues potentially, and things dying, and all sorts of just problems with this machine. Um, it's it is one of the last of the the VHS equipped machines that came out from Panasonic. Um, dates from around about 2011, so we're only to talking about sort of 10 years old, 10, 11 years old, um, which is quite amazing really uh, to think that VHS made it that long and um, something like this was still available. Um, the deck itself is not that bad um, quality wise. It's certainly far better than the JVC equivalents um, and pretty much anything else that was about the time um, is still hanging on. Um, the deck is pretty good, um, but when I say that, it's nothing compared to like the 80s decks. Um, it's, it's weak, it's 
uh, poorly designed um, for repair. Um, it is very fragile. So, but anyway, we'll go through that. Let's take it apart, have a look, and let's crack on. Okay, so I've managed to get it into VCR mode, pop the tape in, and uh, yeah, it's it's playing absolutely fine. I mean, this, this tape is not great. Um, it's long play, standard audio, so it's, it's not going to be great. But uh, yeah, it's, it's doing a great job, and uh, really pleased with that. So... It looks like we just need to look at the DVD side of it. Um, but uh, yeah, let's take the top off and take a look. Okay, so let's take it apart. Uh, two screws each side, and there's three screws. Uh, one, two, three at the back. First look inside, and it is really dusty. Uh, really dusty. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to Take it outside with a brush and give it a good brush out. It's not a perfect job, but it's a heck of a lot better. And I think I've already discovered one of the issues. See here, this capacitor, it sort of leaked out the top slightly. Um, now, I was actually going to say, really, all of these small capacitors here, and these here, uh, plus I think there's one under there, and that one, they all need to be changed really. Um, they're very unreliable and they will go. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna be the next thing I think. Take the power supply out and uh, have a look. Okay, so I do have the manual on the way, but I'm just gonna wing it. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do to get the power supply out, let's take the front cover off. Um, I need to take this off anyway, it needs to be cleaned. So, I think this should be fairly straightforward. And my idea is, is to then remove the um, DVD drive. It's one clips, so you can see there, it's actually got sockets. Uh, the mount onto the main board, so you don't have to worry about ribbon cables or the such. And then I'm going to take out the whole assembly. So it actually screws. I've got one, but it doesn't matter because it's all coming out anyway. Now uh, see it better on this side. A hole through the chassis drive and their little silver self tappers then what I'm going to do is remove the little door to board Slightly smaller cross blade screwdriver just to get this little bracket out. And screws out the back. That just lifts off. In many ways, that's probably a better way to do it. So, this in theory should just lift off now. Oh, that's two screws at the front as well. So, let's undo these. I assume I need to take these out. They're the same as the other four from the sides. Oh, and then there's one up here. So one here. <laughs> it's just out of shots. And let's lift this up. Oh, come now, yeah, there we go. So you can see there where the uh, 
board mounts and you can also see here this capacitor this capacitor this one's swollen this one's swollen um there seem to be more over here than sort of in the main power supply area but uh yeah we'll just try and change as many as possible i suppose and test them so uh yeah let's whip the board out I'm just removing these, um, they're not too bad. Uh, there's a little clip in the center, um, which uh, you're trying to get the connector past. Um, little pull up tabs on the sides, like so. And um, screw here. Again, the same screws. Screw it here. Don't know whether the fan needs to come out to skip clearance, but it's on a connector, so it's. I assume it doesn't need to. There we go. And then screw on the back for the where the mains connector is. Slightly different style of self tapper, and there's also one for the optical outs, and one it's the same type of screw, and then one uh, here. Component out. This should, in theory, now lift out. And it does. Super. So I've just given it uh, another dust. Um, while it's all apart, it's a good opportunity to do that. Um, interestingly, you see there's a sort of a brown, a browner part of the board here, which suggests heating. And you may think, oh, why, why is that hot there? Well, it's because there's a, a voltage regulator on the bottom. Um, with the heat sink, and of course, it heat rises anyway, but it is it is on straight onto the PCB, so it's causing it to uh, put quite a lot of heat in that area, and thereby making these caps leak. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what it'll be causing that. Also, let's just check um, some mains capacitor there. And um has been off for a while. Been off for oh, a good hour. Let's just see if there is any voltage there, just so uh, you know whether you need to discharge it manually. Uh, because you don't want to be putting that across you yourself. Uh, where are you there? There's 2.5 volts across there, so I'm going to do any harm. Um, I was looking for any dry joints on these transformers. Both look pretty good, so I'm happy with that. So I suppose I better check out these uh, capacitors and uh, see if I've got any in stock. So here's a list of all these caps, uh, I've included the two in the primary, although not the main um, smoothing cap. So we've got one 100 microfarad at 25 volts, one 68 microfarad at 35 volts, two 680 microfarad at 25 volts, uh, two 560s at 16 volts, one 20 microfarad, 16 volts, three of those, uh, 56 microfarad, 50 volts, two of those. Uh, 1800 microfarads at 10 volts, one of those. 680 microfarads at 10 volts, two of those. 470 microfarads at 16 volts, one of those. 47 microfarads at 10 volts, one of those. And 100 microfarads, 25 volts, one of those. And out of all of those, I think the only ones I have are that one, that one, and that one, and possibly these. Uh, although they'll be 
probably 16 volts or even 25 volts. So I need to order some capacitors. So uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> okay, so all the caps have changed, um, all the ones that needed to be changed. Um, there's a casualty list. You can see quite a few of them are um, pretty bad. Um, majority of the ones in this area here actually weren't too bad at all. Um, they looked as if they'd got a bit hot, but none of them were sort of really testing bad or whatever, or checking bad. I haven't put them on the tester actually. But uh, yeah, it's all done. I know they're, they're good now. Um, obviously I also did these two as well, just for what it's worth. Pointless doing this one, um, unless it is actually physically showing signs of leakage. Um, going bad, so yeah, let's get it back in the deck. Okay, so power supply's back in, but the next thing I want to do is just check this deck. Now, I have a feeling this is probably going to be okay now the power supply is sorted, um, but I do want to give it a clean. It's a very dusty machine anyway, um, relatively dusty, so uh, certainly no harm and at least checking it out and giving the lens a clean and just checking that everything moves as it should no cracked gears and that it's it's well lubricated so uh, as simple as just pulling this off yes so it is just as simple as just lifting the cover so um it's looking pretty okay. It's quite a bit of fluff and dust. Uh, so let's just give it a bit of a brush. Round the outer bits. Obviously you're not gonna brush the lens itself. Let's clean up the spindle. Seems okay. The lens actually looks pretty clean. Um, I'm gonna just away. Just clean that up as well. So I've literally just used a bit of this stuff. Um, just to just add a film of lubricant to the sliding or oh, the bars that allow everything to slide um, allow the assembly to slide back and forth but the deck itself looks absolutely fine unless there's a laser problem with it of course but um, they tend to be pretty reliable by this this time so i'd like to think that it was just power supply uh, it'd be lovely if it, if it is. So putting the lid back on, just make sure this sliding assembly here is actually right up as far as it will go, so because it locates on the other side of this. We'll slide up here as the uh, drawer comes out. And um, it goes on front, clips underneath the plastic. And then it should jiggle it about a bit so the holes sort of line up and then it'll it'll sit down. Um, so yeah, get these screws put in and uh, stick it back in the deck. Okay, so they're in. I'll just get a fluff caught in that one. Make sure they're tight. Yeah, lovely. I'll just check underneath. You see there the, the main panel. These capacitors here will no doubt in some point, at some point in the future will cause problems, but this is still quite young um, <laughs> compared to the, like the older machines. You know, it's, it's a very recent um, deck, so I wouldn't have thought these should be giving problems probably for another few years. So, uh, yeah, so... Chassis back in. I have to say, um, I ordered these capacitors um, 
yesterday afternoon, it was about five o'clock um, yesterday afternoon, and they arrived today. Um, they actually arrived just after lunch, I think it was. So really an, an incredibly fast turnaround there from Farnell. Um, and it's really why I bought from Farnell. Um, you could argue maybe they're a little bit more expensive, although I don't tend to find they are. Um, and just making sure I haven't made a mistake. Yes, I have. So, well, I've gone wrong. There's a screw behind here, which I know you can't see. Um, where there doesn't need to be one because when this gets put back in, clip. I can't remember which way around that went. Um, <laughs> because um, the DVD deck itself actually holds the front of the print down, so. Yeah, um, it does, the spring clip actually only goes one way, um, clips in, goes on, then I put the screw in, put the HDMI slot in there because it is unique. Um, uh, I don't want to lose it. Um, yes, yeah, so this is all back in. I've connected the fan back up. Um, so we need uh, this bracket. Which has a black screw self tapper so this little lip here actually goes underneath clips in a bit of a fiddle to do and then just goes in like so so just to show you so Bottom end of that just goes underneath this. And there's a locating little bit of metal there, pokes out, and a screw holding it all down. And that just keeps the HDMI board and DVD interface board um, connected. So, also notice I managed to cut myself. Um, the metals in this are really quite sharp. And uh, yeah, it's. Uh, you know, even the case is the metal is really thin, but it's like a knife edge. So, yeah, you don't expect to get away without uh, <laughs> getting um, getting cut. So, um, I need to now put screws in the front, which I'll do. I'm now tempted to actually remove the deck um, just to check it and check mode switch. And, uh, yeah, just make sure everything's okay. I assume there's a belt under here as well. I'd be surprised if there isn't. So uh, let's do that next. Okay, so I've decided to keep this um, fairly short, this video, and I'll, I'll do a part two, which will cover the deck. But I thought before um, I wrap up, let's just see what happens now I've done the power supply um, and had a look at the DVD see if it actually behaves any differently. So I'm just popping the front on. You can see I'm lifting the door up um, because there are, or there is, a mechanism that uh, lifts up the, the door. So if you don't lift up the door, it gets the wrong side and things will go horribly wrong. And I haven't got that very well lined up. Yeah, so that's on. Fantastic. Uh, so, moment of truth, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to 
I've got the screws in because obviously I'm going to take the front back off to get the deck out, uh, which we need to do. So, here goes. Well, that's a good start. Please wait. Hmm, not convinced. This is, yeah, it's still doing the same thing. Oh, hello. <laughs> so we've got no spin. And, oh no, there we go. Oh. Um, that's looking fairly hopeful. Um, it's on VHS. I'll try to select. Maybe, I don't know. That's just copying, isn't it? Oh, it's looking to... It's setting itself up, so, yeah. Um, can I power it off? Please wait. Bye. Oh, we've got a clock display. So it is, because obviously I've not used one of these before, so it is actually quite slow in um, booting up. I'm just a bit concerned that it isn't actually allowing me to select anything. But I wonder if that's because I need to go through setup first. So, um, oh, there we go. No cassettes. So that seems to be doing stuff. Oh, there we go. And it's playing. Way, that's fantastic. Okay, so um, that caught me out a bit insofar as, uh, yeah, it's quite quite slow to sort of get started, but um, everything looks good so far, touch wood. Um, so I'm going to wrap this one up here. Uh, so we've got working power supply, DVD sections serviced and working. And in part two, we'll look at the deck and anything else that I find basically with these decks. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And uh, I'll be doing loads more VHS stuff as well, interspersed with Betamax and everything else. So uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. Take care and bye for now.